Welcome to Projects for All. About a month ago, someone I know asked me to make them a dog training platform. She sent me a picture of it, and it is the most basic thing. It's um, a flat board, one foot by four foot, with two two by four sandwiched together to make legs in three spots on the board. And I thought, this is too simple for something I'd want to make for the channel. But since then, someone else had an interest in the same thing. And when I dropped it off for her, she said, thank you for making it. You can't buy this online. And I thought, that seems ridiculous because I never found anything I couldn't find online that I wanted. I looked and there are a couple people that sell these online, but they're not cheap for what you're getting. So we're going to do it two ways. The first way I'll do as simple as humanly possible, with as little tools as possible, with as little expense as possible. And the second way, we'll make it nice, we'll put some lag bolts in it, we'll make it so it lasts for a long time. And then at the end, we'll paint it. So we'll paint the, we'll do the simple version first, then the fancy version, fancier. And then we'll paint it, and I'll separate everything in chapters so you can just skip to the one you want if you want. So for the first version, you have to have a drill. You can borrow a drill. You can get a corded drill. It's just a drill. You're going to need a driver. You're going to need a dozen, two and a half inch. These are all purpose screws. You can get any kind of screws you want. This is a 532nd drill bit. One drill bit. You're going to need it. You get a tape measure. A saw of some kind. This I think I paid 10 or $12. I had to go out and buy this because the handsaw I own, which is somewhere probably in this garage or house or basement or somewhere. So I bought this. We'll see how it does. I haven't used one of these in years. Safety glasses are always a good idea. So the most basic items. So let's look at the other items you need for the fancier version and what you'll need to paint it and let's do it These are the two wood items. We're gonna use this is birch plywood. It's three-quarter inch thick It is probably nicer than you need for a project like this a lot of people just use a pine board I already have this. This is what I built the first one out of I'm not gonna show you cutting this because you can go and buy a project board that's two feet by four feet from your big box store and just have them chop it in half for you. You don't need a saw to do this. You don't need anything fancy to do it. This is just a regular premium construction stud. It's a two by four. It is eight foot long. You're gonna need six feet of it. I bought an eight footer and I suggest you do the same because sometimes you'll notice imperfections or something you don't want on it and you wanna cut that out when you get home. And it's always nice to have a little extra in case you goof up. So for the very, very simple, easy version, all we're gonna do is measure 12 inches. We'll mark it in a few spots, 12 inches. So we make ourselves a line. We're gonna make six feet, one foot long. little bit of an arm work out there, but we got six legs. So we're gonna take two at a time. And basically we're just gonna screw them to the bottom here and then we'll move on to paint. Take your legs and flip them around, try and find a nice tight fit because they'll have curvature from being cut and just from a natural product. And you'll find they fit better together a certain way. So mix and match them a little bit, try and get a nice fit on them. So we've got our 530 second drill bit. We're just gonna drill two holes. Just through the first board, not really through the second. It really doesn't matter where you drill the holes. And we'll install our driver and our drill. Just by touch, we'll try and line these up as best we can.
line it up again. And there you go, one leg. So I marked my holes for attaching the feet to the bottom. And I only did that because I'm gonna reuse the holes for the fancier version. So two and a half from the side and one and three quarter, which is halfway through a two by four from the end. Put our board on there and we'll just line our legs up. done. So this is what I'm going to use for the better version. We got the driver. We're going to attach the legs with these three and a half inch three eighths carriage bolts with the nylon nut. To drive them we need a 14 mil socket. You need a ratchet or an adapter for the driver. We're going to use this one inch Forstner bit to countersink and a speed square is always helpful. We're also gonna end up using a three quarter inch hole saw, a quarter inch round over bit in the router. In pretty much every project, you're gonna need some kind of sander. Sandpaper would be fine too, but this makes it a lot easier. We took out all our screws. We took everything back apart. When I hand cut these, I cut them a little too long. So we're gonna run them through the table saw. We'll get a nice flat square edge on these. So I set the stop lock on the crosscut sled. So we're gonna drill two more holes and we're just gonna attach these together. I clamped them to the table. We're gonna avoid two and a half inches from the end for our screws because that's where our lag bolts are gonna go through. But other than that, we'll just put them in any random spot. I'm gonna drill holes again. Cause if there's an existing hole that goes through, it might pull it funny. So I'm gonna do new holes. And all we're trying to accomplish is to get it to hold together so we can drill the 3 8 hole right through where it should be. Our screw holes from the easy build are exactly two and a half inches from the edge. Both sides, every hole is the same. So we're gonna mark our leg two and a half inches exactly the same. that to drill the holes so everything lines up perfectly. These holes are exactly one and three quarters from the edge, which is exactly half of a stud. Stud is three and a half, so we're going to use that reference to mark where that hole is. On the tops of our legs, we're gonna drill straight through. On the bottoms, we have the same mark. And what we're gonna do is countersink with the Forestner bit first. Once we have them countersunk, then we'll drill all the way up through the top, through the countersink.
So how do we get these holes lined up perfectly with those holes? What we're gonna do is line this up as best we can, exactly the way we want it. We're gonna clamp the whole thing together. And we're gonna drill 3 8 holes through here, down through those holes. So for off a little bit, instead of having to elongate the top and have our carriage bolt not bite, we'll elongate the holes in the feet here and it doesn't really matter because you're never gonna see it. So we'll drill through the top here, I'll clamp it all together, and then we should be able to assemble the whole thing and uh, get to painting. So when I built one of these last time, I took this hole saw and I cut down about a millimeter or two to countersink these in just a little bit to get that edge off. This time I figured I could suck them down enough. We're going to paint it. You probably, you know, it would be good enough, but it's kind of not. It's got more of a pronounced edge than I'd like. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, I don't have a hole saw or anything to to cut this that's exactly the same size. So the hole will be slightly larger. Uh, we'll just soften the edges of the hole with some sandpaper. Uh, the other problem that I didn't think about is this way, the router actually hits the bolts, which isn't the worst, but it's not ideal. So we'll do that real quick and we'll keep going. So there you go, slightly countersunk, less of an edge. When a dog hits this thing full steam and tries to stop, there's less for them to get caught on. I think that's good. There's, I went maybe a little too deep. There is still a little bit of an edge, but some of the paint's gonna fill that up. We have sand in the paint, it's gonna be goopy. It's gonna fill that up a little bit anyway. Much better. So we're essentially done. It looks great, it's rock solid, It'll work perfect, but why not make it a little better? We'll use the trim router. I got a quarter inch round off bit. We'll do the edges with that. Give it a nice soft edge.
Here are the painting items I chose. Got an inexpensive paint. The internet tells me that dogs see blue and yellow the best, so I picked out this blue color that I thought looked nice. We're gonna use a roller, and specifically a roller, because we're gonna mix sand into the paint to give it an anti-skid surface. I think you can use pretty much any sand you like, but I would probably try and keep it to where it's a uh, consistent grittiness and maybe not some rocks in it. So we're gonna do about a quarter to a third sand to paint. We'll mix it in real slow. Try not to get any clumps. Alright, so that's all I can do today. We're gonna let it cure. I'm amazed at how uniform it turned out. If it ends up being too grippy or too abrasive for a dog to come to a, an abrupt stop on it, then we'll just add a coat of regular paint over it to, to dull it down a little bit, but it turned out pretty good. So I'll turn the garage heater on and we'll give it a day or two. We'll come back and see what the final product looks like. Pull the tape off, checking out how it did. I've tested this a little bit and it's pretty durable. And I'm not losing grit. The sand's not wearing off. The carriage bolts will be the weak link in the finish. You can see it's coming off right there. So it might be smart to scuff up those carriage bolts and dip them in some primer first, but I'm not really that worried about it. Just for durability's sake, I might throw another coat of just paint on it. See if you can seal it up a little better. But, can't really ask for much more than that. So whether you make this the easy way or you make it a little bit fancier, this was a fun project and it was super easy to build. I hope to see you in the next project. If you found some value in this video, consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you very much.